Hello Moto America fans and welcome to this latest edition of Off Track with Carruthers and Bice. Carruthers is on the other side of the table. I'm Bice and we are actually going uh, in video form this week because we're at the Ridge Motorsports Park in Shelton, Washington and we're talking to Rocco Landers who probably is the closest rider to this track in terms of him being from Oregon. Would that be right? Probably. I mean, I know one kid's from Washington State, actually. Oh, uh, um, Sam Verderico. He's from uh, Wenatchee. Oh, I was he's not thinking, exactly a kid. Well, no, I was well, no, thinking about, about Junior Cup. Colstead. So. Oh. David Colstead. Yeah. He's from, oh, he's from Washington. Colstead, yeah. I, haven't, I don't know him that well. i got to get to know him a little bit. But anyway, we have Rocco here who has had a very busy schedule. He, well, actually, since the season started, he's racing in Liquid Molly Junior Cup and Twins Cup in Moto America but he also was chosen for the Red Bull MotoGP Rookies Cup. And even though that season's gotten a little strange with COVID-19 and what he's had to do, he actually raced the past two weekends in Austria, I believe Spielberg, is that yeah. correct? Yeah, yeah. Um, and we're gonna talk to him about that. He's, so he's been racing a Kawasaki Ninja 400, uh, Suzuki SV650 and uh, KTM 250. RC, RC250 RC250. GP, I think. Okay, so thanks for being on with us, Rocco. Yeah. All right, let's talk. Let's start with the Red Bull Rookies Cup. Okay. Because I'm kind of interested in that. Because All right. I, I was watching from here, and I and I know for a fact based on who's gone there and who's tried it that it's like ultra hard. Did you find it? I mean, obviously your results showed that it's ultra hard because we know how good you are, but it, it's very difficult. Am I right? I mean, I did way better than I expected to do. I expected really? I my goal for the first race was to not finish last, and my goal for the second race was to finish top twenty. My goal for this is the first weekend was to finish top. My my goal was for for the first race not finish last, and for the second race if I didn't finish last was to finish top twenty, and that actually happened. Okay. But then my second weekend my goal was top fifteen, but then we had some mild technical difficulties and we had to DNF from one of the races. But the second race we had. I was able to get inside the top. I finished like 16th, I think, but I had a long lap penalty, and I believe I had pace for top 15. So when you're when you're over there doing that, I mean, is your focus? Do you focus on lap times? Like, okay, I'm this much closer now. I'm this much closer. That's basically all you can do, right? M mostly at that point, it's like just try to become, make the gap at the end of the race shorter and shorter and shorter, which is what I did at the end of, the, of every single race, and just make my lap times closer and closer and closer to. The now, race. the next race isn't for a while, but I think I, I saw maybe on your Instagram or something that it's a track you've been to and that you like. I actually, it's at Aragon in October, so yeah, it's been a little bit of a while, but at, Aragon is one of my favorite tracks of all time. Like, I've raced there and stuff. It suits my style more because I'm a little bit heavier than those guys, so it's not quite so many, so many like, uphill straights, which is going to be a little bit better for me. So, yeah, I mean, that track wasn't ideal for your situation, obviously, at all. Not really. I mean, it's, it was a little bit difficult because just some of the, some of the straights are uphill, which is quite difficult because of my weight. But I mean, I still had a good time and I still improved. Okay. Another question. How, and this isn't saying you're not putting maximum effort in here, but is the, what's the effort like there? Like every lap, is it just like eyes closed kind of thing or? I ride that. I try to ride like yeah, that always. It's all the same. <laughs> all right. That makes sense. Yeah. And uh, one of the things I wondered about going over there, I mean, it, it ended up being two weekends in a row at the same track, so it prob that probably helped you a little bit except for the mechanical problem yeah. you had, but um, it helped you to familiarize yourself. Uh, did, did the other riders, did you get a sense of whether they've been on that track before? They had a test they there. They had a test there, okay. yeah. Every, every rider except one had a test, and, it, and th some of them have raced those types of bikes for quite a while as well, so that was a little bit of an advantage on their part. I was happy with how I did. Mm -hmm. with how close I was able to get as close as I was as, as with as short amount of time as I had I believe I was 1.8 per lap off at the end with in the beginning I was like five seconds off so we mentioned at the top here you you're racing a Kawasaki Ninja 400 in Junior Cup you've got uh, SV650 and you've also got um, this other bike this RC250 yeah, RC250 GP I yeah don't know, I don't know so that. tell tell us compare the three bikes if you would in terms of like Lightness, how they feel, handling, you know, corner speed, any any of the stuff that you feel. Well, it depends on like like different things. Like, fun factor, just like the way I just enjoy riding the bike. I would have to say my SV650 with the uh, sport bike track gear Suzuki. 
that's just just a fun factor. I enjoy riding that bike. Like if I if I was to go to a track day and just try to have some fun, I got I would pick that bike probably mm-hmm. of all the bikes I've ridden. Uh, second f- fun probably the the KTM and I've ridden the Junior Cup bike for quite a while, so it's just kind of eventually become routine. It's not just like oh we go have some fun today on the Junior Cup bike. Junior Cup bike is more of a ri- race bike for me now. It is. Yeah. Like wow. I, it's not it's not so much of a it's not so much of just a fun bike to go ride, but then for race bike. Clearly, the, the KTM. And, the and why is the that? Is it the frame? Is it the engine? What 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 there's, makes that bike? There's so no comparison from that bike to the to either of the two bikes I have. And it's here. a pure race bike. Right. It's it's insane. It's it it just turns it turns like you, you gotta flick the bars and it goes like that. Mm-hmm. You gotta you can't be you don't you aren't hard on the bike at all. You have to like be relaxed and smooth and it just uh, it, it's so smooth. And then handling wise depends like. The SV is smoother on its side, but doesn't turn quite as fast. And the 400 turns a little bit faster, but it's a little bit more like slides a little bit. So those are somewhat similar handling wise. And I prefer the SV because it's a little bit faster. Mm-hmm. So when you when you were chosen for Red Bull Rookies Cup, it was last September or Oct- when was it? When was it? That- I want to say it was mid October. Mid October. Okay. It was a little bit after Barber. And and we just remember. We saw you so much last year because of all your, your success. So you were in the press conferences a lot. We got to know you well. Um, and you, then you were selected for that. And you were, and this year, the first time I saw you, I was like, oh, my gosh, I, I didn't recognize you. Because you, you're about seven inches taller than you were yeah. before. So, And it seemed like even then you were a little bit taller than those other riders, even last year. I mean, I was taller than every other rider last year. And this year I'm about the same height as the tallest. Wow. And, and what is that? What does that mean? I talked to your your dad a little bit about this, and you can't do a lot to these bikes. And I even thought he said, you know, you need to, you can't move the rear sets in Red Bull. Yeah, you can't do anything. To the so, bikes. so the ergonomics don't really fit you that well. You show up and you kind of, you can like, I believe you can lower the front and change the spring brake, but you only there's like very, it's very limited. So it's more about just to have adaptability. Okay, except sometimes when your your body is what it is. Like your dad was saying, you, you know, it might have been good to put stomp grip on the side of the tanks because you use that over here and it helps you grip, especially if your knees aren't in the right position and they won't even let you do that. So handling on the bike, I mean, I know it is what it is and you're going to ride whatever is there, yeah. but um, there were some definite challenges with that. So obviously after you get to October, you think you're going to, it's going to be a while. Yeah. Um, I don't know if you'll remember how it <laughs> felt or anything, you know? Well, I mean, Red Bull has a great program. Like they, they're all super, super clean cut. The bikes work well. It's the same for everyone. No one gets stomp grip. It, but I mean, the series is all about adaptability. Right. It's all about learning how to ride the bike and cha- and not like. It's it's about it's about like just figuring it out. As right. You go. A lot of the guys that I I you know I was paying attention to it obviously a little more than normal because you were there, but a lot of the guys that are at the front do have a year of that under their belt. A few of them do, and some of and a couple of them raced um, European Championship Moto Three last year, or Junior World Championship, and uh, or European Talent Cup. So those are also Moto Three bikes, and yeah, uh, yeah. it's a tough deal. It's, it, it's similar. Uh, a European Talent Cup or a Moto Three Junior World Championship bike is a little more similar than a Ninja Four Hundred is. I see. Yeah. Those bikes. Well, so let's talk a little bit about what you're doing this year. How it came to be that you ended up, you know, because of situations with COVID. We weren't sure, well, before we get to the COVID part, we weren't sure we were going to see you because of Red Bull. Then COVID happened, and we started hearing, oh, Rocco's going to be around. And then it turned out, not only are you defending your championship from last year in Liquid Molly Junior Cup, but you're racing in Twins Cup this yeah. year. And some of the some of the riders, like your dad used to race, and he probably says, well, I used to race a couple classes on a weekend, but you know now it's like you have two, you, you race... Well, you race three, usually three, if usually not four three races. Three or four races per weekend. For right. sure three, possibly four sometimes. And and what is that like for you? Uh, is it hard? I mean, it depends. Like Atlanta was quite hard because I wasn't I had food poisoning and that was a little bit a little bit difficult. But usually I mean I get I usually get a break in between the races and I can just go back out, freshen up and go. So it, and you're young. You're fifteen, but uh, still it's it gets fifteen to and a half. Fifteen and a half, <laughs> yes. Let's are you going to get your driver's license right, right away, by the way? Uh, when I turn 16, yeah. You pro- I, don't you it's already- funny, like a lot of kids don't anymore. I know, but I remember, I, I think you already drive a little bit around your property, don't you? Don't tell anyone. <laughs> yeah, we won't <laughs> tell anyone. It's private property, you can do whatever you want. 
Yeah, no, exactly. I think he likes to drive the truck or something around from what I remember talking to you, but you, you already have some driving skills. Already. My dad taught me how to drive. I, God, I had just turned eight. He takes me out in my mom's Jeep. He's like, all right, I learned how to drive when I was eight. Get out there. It's good for pretty, you. That's it's pretty good. awesome. Did you expect, um, coming? You, you won 14 races last year. Yeah. And you come back for a second year. Yeah. Did you expect? Did, was it a shock to you that you didn't win those first three races and, and how strong Do- Dominic Doyle's been? It wasn't really a shock. I knew he was going to be strong. I, I, I expected to be able to win those first three races, and the first two were a little bit difficult for us. Like, we didn't, we, we, we weren't, op- like, the bike wasn't optimally prepared. We just had some technical gremlins those first two weekends, and we had a bent frame for the, for the first two, oh, that's right, for yeah. one of the races as well, because I had crashed in one of the qualifying sessions. And we didn't know that until after the race. And I was like, this thing just doesn't feel right. And then I went and put straight in the frame out, and I was able to win that next race. And then I won in Atlanta, and I won in Pittsburgh as well. And now we got a championship lead. So I'm pretty happy with how it's going so far. But it's also kind of good to have somebody that at least oh, yeah. keeps you honest, right? I mean, that's what makes you faster. I, mean, I wouldn't have done – I would. neither of us would have done 39s at at, at, uh, at Road America. Like, we did 39 – two minute 39 lap times have never been done before neither of us would have done those if it, I, I, he probably wouldn't have done those if I hadn't been there and I right. would, probably wouldn't have done those if he hadn't been there right so here's an interesting thing we're here at this test today and the way the sessions have been done they're taking some of the classes and putting them together so uh, today the Junior Cup Liquid Molly Junior Cup and the Twins Cup riders are out on the track at the same time Rocco races in both classes so I want to know, I think in each session, it seems like maybe you raced one bike or the other. How did you do that today? Well, for the first, we had four sessions. Right. And so for the first two on the Junior Cup bike, we, I was, our plan was to go out once on the Junior Cup bike and finish the day on the Twin. We were going to go out the first session, do three on the Twin, but then we had a problem with the bike in the first session. And I, was, I was only able to do like two laps, and I had to pull in because we were having difficulties with the, just uh, something about shift, the shifter. And we went back out in the second session, and we had a t- completely different problem, with, which happened to also be with the shifters. It was just a different problem. Then we went, came back, and our goal, my, my dad said, if it works, do th- one hot lap, pull in, and jump on the twin. Because mm-hmm. I've been here before on the junior cup bike, and I hadn't been here on the twin. So I went out, and I did one lap, or I, I did an out lap, a fast lap, and I pulled in, I jumped on the twin. So I did two, one and a half session on the twin, and I basically did one and a half of a good session on the junior cup. And, and it's weird because if you look at the combined, we posted the combined results for today. And, of course, Rocco's name was on the results twice. You were fastest in the session on the Junior Cup bike. Yeah. And you were eighth fastest on the Twins Cup bike. I would have thought you could go faster around here on a Twins Cup bike. And is I it- went back out and I was, I was going six seconds a lap faster on the Twin than I was on the Junior Cup bike. I went back out at the end. I did my final. I, I only did, like I said, I didn't. A half, one half of a session, basically, because the first two were kind of throwaways. I did one half of a session on the Junior Cup bike, and then I did one and a half on the Twin. And I went, I did, hell, I must have done, I must have done eight laps, and this has been the final final session. On my on my final lap, I was able to get up to the top of the yeah. boards. Yeah. But On a 400? No, I was, that was on the Twin. The, four, the, twi- oh, the 400, the twin. I, I, and Junior Cup, I'm actually second fastest today. Okay. But I'm happy with, with second fastest due to only doing uh, like just a certain a little bit of track, track time. But Did, do, Does riding both bikes, I mean, you, obviously seat time. The test is different because you're, not, you're getting less seat time than everybody yeah. else because you're doing both bikes. On a typical weekend, though, you're getting more seat time, and you're 15. That yeah. clearly must help you. I mean, develop. I really enjoy it. It's... Yeah. Because on last year when you'd come in and you'd do maybe uh, you'd do one session and at the end of the day you got one one more session. It's, if it's a new track you've never been to, that's difficult. Mm-hmm. Especially like a track like Sonoma. That was a two-day weekend as well. So I had to show up on Saturday. I had one session, a qualifying session, and a race. And it was on it was the same day. Mm-hmm. That was hard because it was a two-day weekend. And, I'd, and then Sonoma was one of the hardest tracks I've ever, I've ever had to learn. Hmm. How do you like this track? One of my favorites. Really? Really? So wow. My favorite is Sonoma. Second favorite, a track called Castagnoli in Spain. Third favorite, another track in Spain called Calafet. And then fourth, favorite, that. Yeah. fourth favorite is uh, um, probably here. Wow. Cool. How, a, how many times? Have you raced here a lot? I've never raced here. So I've just ridden. I've done, 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 done testers on the junior cup bike. Nice. 
What, what is it that you like about this track for people that are going to be watching, you know, this weekend? Well, it's, uh, the grip is pretty good usually. Uh, it's a smooth surface, and it's just a nice layout, like a lot of, like up and down. Mm -hmm. that kind of thing. You like changes in elevation? Yeah. Pittsburgh, you like Pittsburgh okay? Yeah, I like Pittsburgh a lot. That's got some good track. elevation in it, yeah. That's got to be the slowest section of any racetrack we go to, isn't it? One of it? my favorite corners in all it's racing. It's like, I think Bobier said it's like 21 miles an hour or something. It's like, yeah. Something like okay, that. is it to me, who is not a racer? I look at that. Come on. And I, and I look at it and I'm like, you sure. That looks like a that looks like the corkscrew. Is it at all like? Well, the corkscrew? yeah, but like no. it's been overly screwed. No. Yeah, it's yeah, it's not the corkscrew. The corkscrew's got the corkscrew is it's like it kind of goes up the hill and you go down, you dip and you go back up and then down. This one's just down. Drop off and yeah. It, it this is slower than the corkscrew at Laguna Seca. Oh, yeah, is that yeah, right? Yeah. 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 Well, do you think this place will be good for racing? Oh yeah, this is an like awesome plenty track. of places to pass and lots of them. Hmm. That's good. Um, so, I want to know about how the dynamics work in your, on a weekend, Moto America weekend. So, your team in Junior Cup is kind of your family. Yeah. The Twins Cup, you go over to M4, but with a bike that is prepared for you, I guess. Does yeah. your dad have any influence on that team? Yeah, and, yeah. It's, okay. My, my dad. It's, the te our team basically is this, it's called Sport Bike Track Your dot com Suzuki. Uh, it's my dad. It's my crew chief Thomas, my chassis mechanic Christian, and uh, Chris Ulrich. And then I ride. Okay. My dad. My dad and I influence a lot on the changes. You do. Stuff. Yeah. Okay. We, it's, we don't go. It's not like they set the bike up how they think it's going to go, and we go out like. I, they change it how I want to. Okay. Um, the other thing I always see about you, Rocco, which cracks me up, is it's such a competitive series, and you obviously won a lot of races last year. So, I don't know. You'd think that a guy like this who d beats everybody would have, I don't know if I want to say enemies, but would have some people that might not, you know. But I see him always chumming around with everybody in the paddock. I mean, you're talking to everybody that you beat, no problem there. It it's easy like, to talk to guys you beat. But, but I mean, they talk to you too. It seems like there's a lot of camaraderie there, well, right? Well, I mean, why shouldn't there be? Well, I mean, because sometimes- I'm to everyone except you guys. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I guess you're right, but you know, which is why if I were a racer, I would probably have a tough time with you beating me all the time. So I might not be as happy to talk to you. But um, it seems like it's okay though, right? I mean, the sport yeah. of racing, you love it. You're highly competitive. Uh, when you put that visor down, you're a different person. Is that what it is? I mean, I don't like sore losers. So if, if you, if someone beats you, you're on, that's on track, off track, you still be friends. Yeah. And you, you kind of, do you make it that way? Like, you seem like you maybe approach them more than they approach you. I might be wrong. But it seems like you're, you want to let people know, I'm, hey, you know, I'm still, I'm, I'm still a friendly guy, you know? Yeah, I mean, why not? Yeah. It's, it's just a, a cool way to be. I mean, I see that happen in all kinds of things where, you know, you fight tooth and nail in something you're doing, but, you know, outside of that, you're okay yeah. with them most of the time. I mean, I try to be nice to everyone. Right. And, you, and I see that you are. I mean, do you... Do you have any certain favorites in the paddock in terms of friends that you hang out with uh, more than anybody else? Or Probably uh, well, me and Ben Glotty and Gus Rodeo hang out quite a bit. Right. We're all buddies, I guess. So probably just because I've hung out with them the most. Right. So. Which, I mean, you're from Oregon and Ben is from New Hampshire, so it's kind of cool, Jersey. isn't it? It's weird, right? <laughs> yeah. But you know what's kind of well, cool? I mean, I, mean, I, I, have, I, I, have, I, I try to be friends with everyone, but I've been, just because I've hung out with them the most, right. I... I'd say they're my best friends in the paddock right now. Right. But you have to remember, too, a lot of these kids are with their family. And, like, at the end of the day, we take off and go to a hotel. And these kids are in, you know, yeah. messing around at night. It's and true. they're with their motor homes and other yeah. families. And it's kind of, like, just turns into a little camping trip, you know, right? Yeah, you're, you're always at the track. You always stay at the track. Oh, uh, yeah. I mean, we did for most of last year. What did you do with, with uh, when you are over with Red Bull? What did the they, hotel. Oh, they had – and you guys were all in the same hotel? Yeah. Okay. Um – yeah, I mean, it's, but did you get to know any of those guys? Were you, was there any camaraderie there, or is it a yeah, language I've barrier? I've known quite a bit of them. He speaks oh. fluent Spanish. Eh, oh, I forgot did. about that. Well, yes, come on, you that's are. pretty fluent, Got what it. I've heard. Yeah. <laughs> I forgot, yeah, I remember at Road America when he was talking, you were talking with, <laughs> he was, it was Dallas <laughs> Daniels couldn't believe it. Dallas he, Daniels was in the golf cart with me. <laughs> and then And then he's, he said, damn, he speaks Spanish. <laughs> yeah, he's like, he, he like just got beaten him by him again, you know, and he's like, ah, the kid can do everything. 
That was pretty funny. That's good, though. How did you learn Spanish? Is that something you... I lived in Spain. And that's how you picked it up? Yeah, mostly. That's how you learned English. Right. I guess I did. I had to listen. <laughs> you know, though, but they say, you probably heard this, when you're younger, you do have a, an ability to pick up languages a lot better than yeah. you do when you're older, so... And also, if you pick up one, it's easier to pick up others, I've heard. No. Come on. <laughs> I learned Italian, and then I learned Spanish, and completely forgot Italian. Hmm. Oh, no kidding. Yeah. Wow. We had... We had At least a, not for me. One of, our, one of my good friends in, was in the paddock, Vittorio Bolognese. He used to talk to, he's Italian, obviously. No. He used to, <laughs> well, I wanted to make that clear. I wanted to make that clear. But he used to talk to one of our writers who was Spanish, and he, he was able to do it. They could communicate. And I guess there's enough common words, yeah, possibly. Yeah, Italian that, and Spanish is quite similar. Yeah. It, it's, it's all like, it, like learning Spanish and English, they're not really similar. Like, oh, there's right. There's like maybe two words that are like. When somebody Spanish is talking to you, do you hear them? In English, and then answer. <laughs> no. I mean, no, I don't know, I right? Don't know I, either. Have to, I have no idea. I have to he- listen to it. I gotta translate it, and then I gotta say, okay. r- answer the question. Man, oh, speaking of not only the, the language, I mean, I guess you're not over there all that long when you go over. Tell us about what, when you go over, when you come back. And speaking of, you had food poisoning in America. Yeah. What about the food over there? I always talk about, you know, it's tough to deal with. The I food mean, food poisoning here. came from truck stop food. Okay, that's as far as it Thursday. comes. So we left on Wednesday and had to drive everywhere. We couldn't just stop at a gourmet restaurant. We had right. to stop every we had to stop at every truck stop. Jump out, get some food. Yeah. Get the restroom. Get back in the truck. Go. This was on your way to Atlanta, right? Yeah. yeah. But when you were over in Europe, I mean, do they have normal food for you? Yeah. I mean, do they provide yeah, it? I was in the, we were eating the Red Bull hospitality. Oh yeah, what's that like? I mean, they have pasta, a lot of pasta, I'm sure. It changes every day. Right, but you were okay with it. I mean, you yeah. didn't have any trouble adapting to no. it or anything. Okay. So you missed the test because of the COVID test, right? We, we They changed it to, from, from, it was 96 hours to 72 hours where we had to get our test and then arrive in Austria. Oh, so the timing it just, just... wasn't going to happen. And then they changed it back to 96 hours so we could get there for the race. At least you passed the test. Mm. Who, who <laughs> keeps track of all that stuff for you? Is it your dad, your mom? I know yeah. they're both very involved. Well, who, which, I mean, is it your mom that works, works on the logistics for you? And Mostly my dad, but my mom also for sure helps yeah. out a lot. Yeah. So when we sat down, uh, the first thing I noticed was Rocco brought his helmet, which... Really? That's the first thing you noticed? I don't know why. Not? And I'm colorblind, but I can see those colors. And I mean, What it's color cool. are they? I know, I know why, I know why you, you... It's HJC. That's why you noticed it. You that's it. The colors. It's the HJC. It's the logo, so clearly. HJC helmet. And the cathedral paint on there, yeah, I noticed. Yeah, the cathedral but, paint did the badass but, paint job here. But it's super cool. I mean, it's got his number 97 all over. It looks like it's got it's some green and green and yellow and blue. Is it or is it purple? Yeah, purple, it's some black. Purple, green, yellow, and blue. Nice. That's and black. That's black. Yeah. Did, did you pick those colors because you, that you like those colors? I said I wanted some yellow on it and some green. I said, well, throw whatever else you want in. And the Jake with cathedral paint literally types that up, sends it to him. I was like. Well, I said I want yellow on it. Sent him a few logos. He threw that on. And I'm like, how'd you throw that together? Do you think this will become a design for you? Because I know one of the things about I have a you. Few. Well, you know, HJC riders, you guys wear, I mean, I see like Tony, you guys wear those superhero helmets yeah. a fair amount. Have, did you wear the Joker one? Uh, that's coming out. I'll be wearing it this weekend. Oh, it's okay. Coming out, coming out this weekend. So, and, and I think, you, did you wear Venom before too? Carnage. Carnage, okay. I don't know a lot of the yeah, characters. Yeah, whenever they come out, we showcase them. Which is, America. which is very cool. I and know. do you know, I mean, do you like the fact that you're showcasing all those cool... Yeah, it's cool. ...superheroes yeah. and stuff? HJC does a good job with yeah, that. I know. There's no doubt about it. Get yourself... What you doing? If you don't have an HJC, what you doing? What this you kid's doing? a walking commercial. Yeah. Thanks, Paul. I was giving... <laughs> I was giving remember I was giving you crap with that oh, list of sponsors? Dude. Oh, yes. yeah, he still hasn't fam- learned. The, Every the, once in a while, he still breaks it the out. The fa- famous list of sponsors. Yeah. Paul's favorite list of sponsors. <laughs> God, nothing drives Number me up the wall more than that world. thing. <laughs> <laughs> well, we let you get a plug for these guys in, and we noticed you got Red Bull going, too. So does it, now that you're a Red Bull rookie, are you an actual Red Bull rider? Like, you know, they used to wear the helmets, and Jake well, Gagne was te- a Red Bull rider? Not, not technically a Red Bull rider, but I'm... Um, Red Bull. Okay, and maybe that'll turn into that. I'll have the Red Bull, yeah, maybe I'll have the Red Bull helmet and stuff, but yeah. the Red Bull Rookies Cup. Which has been around for a long time. It's Those are good looking time. helmets. Yeah. yeah, they're pretty awesome. And do they, with that, do they let you wear any brand you want? Any brand? Oh, helmet? Helmet. Yeah, yeah. Okay. So you wear HJC, it's just with that paint job? Yeah, it's just, it's just. Okay. That's cool. Cool. So I think we're 
done for today with Rocco. I mean, he's had a full day of uh, tests, and he's got uh, tomorrow on the track and Saturday and Sunday with races. And uh, like we said before, Junior Cup and Twins Cup, he's going to be racing three races this weekend, as well as all the practice and qualifying. So he's got his work cut out for him, and we'll let him go um, now. But before we go, I want to make, make sure to mention to you guys that please subscribe to Moto America Live Plus. Um, obviously, we can't have spectators at this round, but we've got all kinds of ways to watch our, our racing. Uh, Fox Sports 1, Fox Sports 2, MAV TV. Um, we're on Facebook Live with a few of our classes, but certainly everything's on Live Plus in uh, streaming and in vid video on demand if you want to see that later. And you go on MotoAmerica.com to subscribe to all that. So, uh, you know, please check us out and check out live timing and all of our social media that we post over the weekend. Rocco, thanks I mean, so much. Yeah, you, what are you doing if you don't have Live Plus? Like, like I said, you got to get, get MotoAmerica Live Plus. See, there's a plug I like see? you to do. Thanks, Paul. <laughs> Good job. <laughs> no, seriously, it, it, I recommend it. <laughs> thanks, right, guys. Thanks.